So I sleep in a hub shelter. It's an otter resort. It's a six-sided, so this thing's huge. This is kind of like my little mansion on the, sh on the ice. I put snow on the edges to make sure that I basically have to use as little heat as possible. These shacks stay really warm, and I've had the heater on low for basically the whole time while I was out here. I have the little side screws. That secures the shack to the ice, and that'll make sure that your shack doesn't blow away. I tried something a little different. So normally you'll have these little metal screws connected to this strap. And this strap is basically there just to make sure that your walls don't cave in on you. I've had a lot of times where this strap over, over the night will actually pull the screw out. So I wanted to try something a little different. So what I did is I drilled two holes and I have a bungee cord going around. And that's just my anchor for that. And I slept out here last night and this worked incredible. I did two corners just because the wind's just coming out of the northwest and this worked out great. If you don't mind getting your arm a little cold, I would highly suggest this. Next I'm going to jump inside the shack. It is a little chilly out and I'm going to show you what's going on in there. So welcome to the inside of my otter hub shelter. Right there I have my fishing setup. I am going for sturgeon. I actually got one last night. I'll put up a quick photo of that here. But the one thing that's really nice about this hub shelter, I have my gloves hanging up there to dry. I always bring a little towel just because the fish or the sturgeon and all the bait kind of gets a little messy. So I kind of use that to dry off my hands and kind of clean them throughout the night. All these windows on the auto resort kind of fold down. And if you need some extra ventilation, if it, for some reason it gets a little too hot, these guys kind of peel off, but I've never had a reason why I've done that. The shack does have some ventilation. We'll crack that open. I do have a carbon monoxide detector running, so I'm really actually not too worried about having any issues from the propane heater. Got my boots stored nicely right there. I got my drill. This is actually a little attachment to the drill that I used to put those spikes in that I had outside, and it makes it putting those in way easier. I have my bed here. I got my sleeping bag and pillow kind of folded up nicely. This place was kind of messy a little bit ago. It's still not perfect, but I am camping, so I'm not too worried about a little mess. But having a cot is really essential for coming out here camping. Last night I was up till midnight, one in the morning, and eventually I wasn't seeing much action on my sonar, so I just jumped into bed put on some Netflix and eventually passed out. One crucial thing that helps for the camping are these foam floor mats. This helps from the ice or helps prevent the ice from all melting under you. And then if I didn't have this, it'd be a big ice rink. I guess kind of like right here in front of my heater. There's actually probably about like two, three inches of water right there. I might chisel out a little, little river there. So it eventually flows into my ice fishing hole. The next big thing for camping on the ice is that eventually you're going to get hungry. I like to use this tiny little butane stove. It's pretty simple. Just kind of flip this little cooking grate over. I'm going to pull it out here because actually it works better outside of this case. But a little tank of butane goes in right there. One tank usually lasts quite a while. But you flip this little switch down and we're cooking. This thing's pretty great. I used it to make some oatmeal this morning. I boiled some water in a little tea kettle and I just added it to the container that the oatmeal is in. Simple meals are your friend out here. So having a heater is really important while you're out here. I currently have the heater on low and it's nice and toasty in here. Once it starts getting a little darker, I might have to crank it up to medium, but having that fan on top of there, that little guy, helps circulate the heat around the shack and that's super nice. So the nice thing about being on the ice is that the ice is basically a cooler for you. I always put some cans in the, on the snow and ice just so I can keep them cold. I'm going to have some beverages later tonight, but it's a little early for that. Probably wait until I catch a fish. But in here I have some hash browns, bacon, and a little bit of butter to cook with. And there's a few beers and water in there as well. If you're going to go ice camping, I'd highly recommend bringing your ice fishing gear. Bring whatever or how many rods that you're allowed to have legally at whatever state you're in. Having a tip up could be a good idea, but for me, I had just have some boppers in. And when I was sleeping, I had to pull my lines up, or I didn't have to, I pulled them up just because I don't want to 
have a sturgeon pull my rod in overnight or have a sturgeon swallow a treble hook. For the couple hours I was asleep, I just had these lines laying on the ice. But if you have a tip up, if you're going for a walleye, I have one over there, but I don't think I'm going to have that set up. I'm, just, I'm kind of fully dedicated to going for sturgeon this whole weekend. But if you have a tip up, like I said, you could set that in, put a bell on it, and you'd be able to notice if you catch a fish or if anything takes your bait. Another thing to focus on while you're out on the ice is having power. I'm doing two days out here, so having a power box to charge my cell phone, camera gear, and also I use this thing to uh, power some lights in my shack. When it gets dark out, you basically can't see in your ice shack. So I have this little USB light bulb. I'll put a link on the in the description for it. It was only $10 on Amazon. It's got this long cord, has a switch here, turns the light on. And just that little light bulb is more than enough for my ice shack. You don't need it to spend like $100 on those crazy ice fishing lights from some of the big companies. Simple is almost better. And if you have a power box, a power pack, anything, it'll pop, basically this light will stay on for probably most of the night. I was actually using this, this little power bank for the light earlier, and I barely used any of the power. Well, everybody, that was the basics of ice camping. If you guys want me to go into any more details on any specific thing, just comment below. But it was a fun video to do, and I hope you guys got something from it. If there's anything that you want me to go over in a future video, just let me know. But until next time, I'm Cam to Drop with Wide Open Water, and I'll catch you later.